Hi everyone, this is Yohan and in this episode I would love to share this fun little canvas bag with applique embellishment. Finish measurements are about eight and a half inch by six and a quarter inch. It comes with a front zipper pocket, a zipper closure and in the interior there is a slip pocket and a zipper pocket as well. Many times when I do this type of zipper closure I would place the D-ring tabs on the side along with the side seams just like in the mini crossbody bag series that many of you really enjoyed but some of you ask alternative way to install them so my answer to that is by creating two panels at the back exterior and then attach the D-ring tabs along with the seams so you may apply this method for small size bags like this all right guys go grab the free pattern at yohansoingstudio.com i will link that down in the description box down below as well please enjoy this tutorial and without further ado let's get started First, we're going to work on the applique. So print out the applique template that is provided in the pattern. So you should have the branch and the leaves. There are three sizes of leaves here. Take a piece of iron on adhesive. I use heat and bond for this project, but feel free to use any brand that is available. Lay the heat and bond on the template with the paper side facing up, just like that. First, I'm going to work on tracing the branch. You can use a regular pen to trace this and it doesn't have to be super perfect just follow the shape of the branch once you've done that cut following the shape but not precisely just yet lay the heat and bond on the wrong side of the fabric that you're going to use for the branch with the glue side facing down and then go to your ironing board and then press this according to the manufacturer's instructions once you've done that, you want to cut the shape of the branch this time precisely with a pair of scissors. I like using these little applique scissors. The shape of the scissors are kind of curved, making it easier to cut precisely around the curved area. If you don't have this though, feel free to use regular fabric scissors. So you should end up with something like this. Now let's peel off the paper backing and then take the lower front exterior panel or the panel 2 and then position the applique panel on the right side of panel 2 so you want to lay that down roughly like this you don't have to do it precisely like me but just consider the seam allowances and you want to have a little bit of space on the very top edges here about an inch or an inch and a half once you're happy with the position of your applique go to your ironing board and press this according to the manufacturer's instructions once you've done that, stitch along the edges of the applique. I use my walking foot attachment here. Every now and then you may need to stop and reposition your needle since there's a lot of curves with this applique. You can either use a thread that is um, somewhat similar color to blend in with the applique or you can use contrasting thread color so that it will pop from your applique. I chose the former but you do you guys. Next we're gonna work the same way for the leaf appliques. I use my head and bone scraps here since I like to make the most off of my stash. Choose any fabric in any color that you like for your leaf appliques. You may stick to one color for every single piece or you may have fun in different colors just like what I do here. Now we're going to arrange the leaf applique. So you want to start from leaf 1 at the bottom and then follow it with leaf 2 and towards the top you want to arrange the leaf 3 or the smaller leaves. Again, you may arrange your leaves as you like and of course pay attention to the seam allowances along the edges so that you don't end up with your leaf appliques kind of cut off from the seams. So once you're happy with how the leaves are arranged, you want to remove the backing paper and press them in place. Once you've done that, go to your sewing machine and then sew along the edges of each leaf. Now we're going to work on the front zipper pocket. You will need an 8 inch long metal zipper. I like to first hand stitch the zipper tape extension so that the zipper will stay shut and it's easier to install the zipper tabs. You may also want to mark the center point of the zipper. Simply measure 4 inches from the start of the zipper teeth. For the zipper tabs, you want to cut two little rectangles. Fold the long sides in half, just like that. And then position that right on the zipper tape extension. Secure it with a clip and you want to repeat the same to the opposite side. Once everything is secured, stitch along the folded edges with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Trim off the excess fabric of the zipper tabs so that they will be the same width as the zipper tape. 
Now we want to make sure that the entire length of this zipper is nine and a half inch. So you want to measure your zipper and if there is any excess fabric from the zipper tab, you want to trim that off. To make sure that everything is centered and symmetrical, you want to use your ruler and then measure four and three quarter inch from the center point of the zipper and then trim off any excess fabric. And repeat the same to the opposite side. So now the entire length of my zipper panel is nine and a half inch. Lay panel two with the right side facing up. Now as usual, we're gonna use basting tape to base our zipper. So you wanna apply some basting tape along the top edges of panel two. Now take the zipper panel with the start of the zipper at your left hand side. You may do the opposite direction, but keep it consistent for all the zippers. So now you wanna lay this right side down. Align all the edges and then finger press to make sure that the zipper tape is sticking to the basting tape. Now apply basting tape along the top edges of the zipper tape. I already did it ahead of time due to some error on my end, so don't mind me on that. Now take panel 3 or the inner pocket panel and lay that right side down. Finger press to secure everything and then stitch with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to turn this to the right side. Finger press the seams both the exterior and the interior and then top stitch. Next we're gonna attach panel 1. So first you're gonna apply basting tape along the top edges of the zipper tape. Lay panel 1 with the right side facing down. Now let's turn this to the wrong side. Apply basting tape along the top edges of the zipper tape and then you wanna bring the bottom edges of panel 3 towards the top. Align the edges with the zipper tape and once everything is secured, stitch this in place with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you wanna finger press the seams and top stitch. And that's it, the front pocket panel is done. Now you want to stitch the side edges where the pocket panel is sitting to hold this in place. Now we want the width of this front panel to be 7 inches. So go ahead and measure this. If there is any excess fabric, you want to trim off the bottom edges. And that's it guys, our front exterior panel is done and ready to go. Now we're going to work on the back exterior panel. So prepare panel 4 and panel 5. We're going to first work on the D-ring tabs. So cut two little rectangles, fold and press them in a fourth to make a half an inch wide strip, just like that. And then stitch along the edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now let's attach the D-ring, just like so. And then position that on the right side of panel 4, about one inch away from the side edges, just like shown here. Repeat the same to the opposite side, and then stitch this with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now let's sew panel 4 and 5 together with 3 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to press the seams, making sure that the D-ring tabs are still sitting on panel 4, and then top stitch. For this project, you will need to make a half an inch wide strap. I used the same canvas fabric to make my strap. Now, due to the thickness of the canvas fabric, you will need a slight wider adjustable strap slider. Instead of half an inch, you will need the 5 8 of an inch one. You can easily find this on Amazon. Now, I'm not going to show you the entire steps on how to make the adjustable strap in this video. I will link a separate video. You can check that out somewhere in the description box. And I will also put the link in the pattern. Now we're going to work on the back interior. So you want to cut two identical rectangle, one for the front and one for the back interior. To make the slip pocket, you want to fold the slip pocket panel in half with the right sides together and then stitch with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to press the seams open, turn the pocket right side out and then press it again and top stitch the top edges. Position the slip pocket panel on the right side of the front interior panel about one and a half inch from the bottom. Pin to secure this in place and then stitch the sides and the bottom with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Next, we're going to work on the zipper pocket. Draw the zipper template on the wrong side of the pocket panel, just like shown on the screen right now. Draw the template about one and a half inch down from the top edges and as usual, you want to also draw the center line and the corner triangles. Position the pocket panel on the right side of the back interior panel about half an inch from the top edges. And of course you want to center the position, pin them in place and then stitch right on the outline of the zipper template and then install the zipper in place. 
Again, this is something that I have done several times before, so I'm pretty sure you already know the rest of the steps. But if you're new and you need a tutorial on that, I will also link a separate video on how to install the zipper pocket. Now we're gonna prepare the zipper closure. So for this project, you will need a 10 inch metal zipper. Again, feel free to use nylon coil zipper. First, we're gonna fold the zipper extension tape towards the wrong side just like so, and then stitch along the edges to hold this in place. And you want to repeat the same to the opposite side. On the right side of your front exterior panel, you want to measure 3 8 of an inch from the left hand side, and then put a little mark there. From the right hand side, you want to measure 1 inch and mark. Apply some basting tape in between the marks, unzip your zipper all the way, and then lay the zipper right side down with the start of the zipper sitting right on the half an inch mark at your left hand side. Place another one inch mark on the right hand side of the zipper tape. Now let's place another basting tape between the half an inch and one inch mark. And then take the front interior panel and lay that right side down. Now let's place another one inch mark on the right hand side of the interior. And then let's go to the machine. Sew with the interior fabric facing up. Use quarter of an inch seam allowance. You want to go down up to the one inch point mark. As you get to the one inch point mark, stop sewing. Keep your needle down and leave your presser foot. And then you want to get the zipper out of the way. So just push it to the side, get the zipper tape out of the way, and then continue stitching. Now let's turn this to the right side. And then finger press the seams, both the exterior and the interior. Try to push the fabric down as much as you can. And then top stitch. So you should end up with something like this. Lay the back exterior panel right side up. And then you want to slide the D-rings out of the way. Now we're going to do the same marking like before, but the opposite way. So the one inch point mark should be at your left hand side. And the 3 8 of an inch point mark should be at your right hand side. Apply basting tape in between the marks. Now take the zipper and lay that right side down. And just like before, you want to make sure that the start of the zipper is sitting right on the 3 8 of an inch point mark. Mark the 1 inch point from the left hand side on the zipper tape as well. And then apply another basting tape in between the marks. And then take the back interior, the one with the slip pocket, and lay that right side down. So with the exterior facing up, still using quarter of an inch seam allowance, of course. And just like before, you want to stop at the one inch point mark, get the zipper tape out of the way, and continue stitching. Once you've done that, turn this to the right side, finger press the seams, and top stitch. All right, so you should end up with something like this. Now it's time to assemble the back. So you want to open your zipper all the way, bring the exterior and the interior right sides together, just like so. Now at this point, it's very important that the zipper teeth are facing the interior side. All right, we're going to secure this with clips. Start from the center or where the zipper is, match the top stitching line and then clip. We're going to do the same to the opposite side. But first you want to push this zipper tail towards the interior of the back so that it will be out of the way from the side seams. Let's match the top stitching line and then clip. All right, now we're going to continue clipping all around and then stitch starting from the exterior side with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then stitch the interior. Leave an opening at the bottom about 4 inches or so. And when you sew at the bottom of the interior, use about half an inch or 5 8 of an inch seam allowance so that the lining fabric will sit snugly inside the back. When you start sewing, make sure that your needle is sitting right by the start of the zipper so that the needle will not step on the zipper teeth. When you sew the lining part, you want to start with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance at the top and then slowly shift your fabric out to get half an inch seam allowance. So if you have a problem with your lining fabric kind of sagging inside the back, this is the way to tackle it by using larger seam allowance. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, at the bottom here, you want to use also half an inch seam allowance. Stop sewing at the opening. Once you've done sewing, you want to trim off all the corners. Be careful not to cut through the stitches, of course. Once you've done that, you want to turn this back right side out, 
through the opening hole. Now let's poke the corners, make them nice and flat. You can use point turner or knitting needle or just the end of your pen. Fold the row edges from the opening hole towards the wrong side about half an inch and then stitch to close the opening. Now let's put the lining back inside and then you can either leave the zipper tail sticking out just like this so that you'll be able to open your zipper wide or you can tuck the zipper tail inside so just insert the zipper tail from under just like that and then start pulling your zipper once you get the zipper going a little bit you may pull the zipper tail all the way in until the edges looks nice and neat now you may attach the strap and that's pretty much it guys our little canvas crossbody bag is done so thank you so much for watching guys and until next time goodbye